After a Scotsman, an Englishman and an Irishman, I, I, I should either be telling you a great joke, which I can't, or I should be Welsh, which I'm not. Um, thank you very much. I'm delighted to be here today. I am hugely passionate, so to, to your, your point about emotion, I'm hugely passionate about employee engagement. Um, and I've been doing communication and engagement since before it was a thing. So right back way in the 80s and 90s. Um, and I cut my teeth in the manufacturing sector of British aerospace. I've always been a great believer that this stuff's not rocket science, it's not hard. What it really takes is it takes time, it takes effort and people to make it work. That's much more important than anything else and I think the people aspect again is back to the emotion. You can't do it without people, you can't do it without their emotion and their involvement. Employee engagement really kind of became a thing, I suppose, over the last decade. I'll tell you a little bit of this background of it, um, just for those of you that are the, are the geeks and want to know. There was a UK government task force that was led by David McLeod, who together with Nita Clark published uh, a report in 2009 on enhancing performance through engagement. This led to a movement called Engaging for Success. In fact, Scottish Enterprise um, hosted the first, and I think maybe the only, Scottish-based event for practitioners here in Edinburgh. With support at the highest level of government, um, and through that into business, because there were some very, very big business people involved, it's really quite unsurprising that employee engagement then featured in the Scottish government's business pledge. I was thinking, Roddy, when you were speaking earlier on, it was almost like I had looked at your speech before, or had heard it before you spoke, because you referenced the business pledge. And, but for some people, that question about why bother, why bother with engagement still remains. So I am going to kind of show you a couple of bits and pieces, a few models again for the, the people that, that like the models. Um, I, I have got a couple of them. Um, why bother? Well, get, the Scottish Business Pledge it really encourages businesses to support progressive workplace um, workforce engagement. That makes lots of sense because when half the staff in Scottish SMEs are saying that they're underutilised and they could make a bigger contribution to the success of the business, it makes sense. It makes sense when simply by investing in your workforce, you can create new energy in that business. It makes sense by engaging your employees in decision making. You're tapping into their experience, their real experience. And it makes sense, to make the point that someone else referenced earlier on, where you've got an engaged workforce which drives innovation, competitive, uh, competitiveness and productivity. That's all necessary to improve Scotland's overall economic performance. So again, really what Roddy was talking about, making Scotland the best possible place it can be. And well-being, obviously, is, is a contributory factor to that. So this, mo this model I gave you here, this is, this is one from an organisation called Gartner. You might have heard of them. And I think that it really kind of demonstrates the, the business uh, benefits of that engaged workforce. You know, we often hear it said, your people really are your greatest asset. So invest in them. Invest your time in them. And the way I look at it is you've either got a bunch of jokers or you've got a bunch of aces. You choose. I know what I would want. Invest in them or don't. One more model, that's all. Um, I'm not very good with these buttons and things, so I'll just apologise in advance. Um, this is a, different, a model from a, an organisation called Melcrum, and I think what it does is it shows you um, just you know, what you can, how it all fits together and what you can expect with good engagement. I think it particularly shows you what you can expect as an employer, so those kind of the, the dark, four dark blue, blue boxes there and then what you really have to put into it as an employer. I'm not going to talk through all of it, but you know that discretionary effort, that's the piece you really want from people when you invest in engagement. You want them to go that extra mile. You want them to feel invested in that business. You want it to be a success. You want them to want it to be a success. And then the things you have to put into it. So you want people to feel empowered, of course you do. You want them to go on and do their jobs. You don't want them to have to keep referring backwards. You want them to feel appreciated. 
or you should. You want them to feel developed and cared for. And the two things I didn't pick up on there, first of all, the strong manager relationship. We've heard that talked about already this morning. It is hugely influential, and I'll talk about that a little bit later on. And also this piece about being connected to the strategy. So I kind of see my team's role as being one of joining the dots for people. So we kind of facilitate the engagement that helps everyone in the business know how they contribute to the business. Help them to increase their productivity and basically impact the bottom line. For me, it's a bit of a no-brainer. Um, so why engagement? Why employee engagement? Well, well, why not? Why would you not do it? I don't really think there's any reasons for not doing it. I'm going to say a little bit about Scottish Enterprise. What I haven't said already is that um, Scottish Enterprise is Scotland's main uh, economic development agency. We're a government agency. So I guess that's maybe not really surprising that I would mention some of the things that Roddy, Roddy has spoken about. Um, I want to let you know a little bit about what we've done over the years in terms of employee engagement. So I've talked about the why, and now I'm going to focus a little bit on our, our how. We've been really lucky. We had a hugely committed chief executive officer. She was very, very committed to employee engagement. We used, um, or we, we do use, the, the best companies methodology. Plenty of other methodologies are available. And you might recognise that as being the Sunday Times best companies to work for. It's really quite easy to understand, and that was one of the reasons that we used it. It gives you great comparisons, it gives you great benchmarks, it gives you great information back to tell you where you have to focus in order to get better. It surveys across eight different factors. Fair deal, my company, leadership, my manager, giving something back, personal growth, my team, and well-being. Of course, my well-being. At Scottish Enterprise, we're lucky. Our results in the well-being factor have always been pretty good. They fluctuate a little bit, but they've always been pretty good. And for us, when you look at the factors and you look at something they call correlation, which is a word I really hate, this correlation word, but basically, there are some factors that are more important to people, and if you focus on those factors, you're going to make the biggest impact in terms of your results. Well-being is quite low down the list for our folks in terms of correlation. However, what we do know is it's very, very linked to the one called personal growth. Um, and in fact, for us, the first time around we did the survey, leadership was the highest one, which was quite interesting, and personal growth the second highest. So for us then, we realised that we had to focus on the, the areas, focus mostly on the areas that were most important to our staff, um, but not exclusively. And that way we would get the better results, if you like, we would improve engagement. So what did we do? I'm, I'm, just, I'm not going to tell you everything on this slide, I'm just going to talk about a couple of bits and pieces. Um, all the factors are there, there's some of the things that, that we have done. After the first survey, we got together a group of um, a cross-section of employees from all ranges, um, all parts of the organisation. We've got 1,300 people, they're all over the world. Uh, the majority of them are in Scotland, but they're actually, um, there's something like 28 countries at the moment, I think we have um, people in. So a group of colleagues worked on the results. They proposed the actions to the senior leadership team. The actions were all accepted and they were all implemented. Some of them were implemented quickly, some of them have only been implemented in the last two years. Our big focus after our first survey was leadership. It was the most highly correlated, as I said to you, and it was also the one we had furthest to go to reach um, our one-star benchmark, if you like, our target. Um, so I think what we did was we, we really focused around something called resins, behaviours, not what we do, but how we do it. Um, and firstly, for our leaders. And we improved by eight percentage points by the next survey. So that's an, immediately a demonstration to those people who are perhaps less bought into engagement that it does, it does work. We've since extended resonance to the managers, Im impacting the my manager factor, and now to all staff, impacting the personal growth factor. Giving something back, we strengthened our volunteering programme. We've more than tripled the number of volunteering hours. And we're now extending that into what I would call more strategic volunteering, so less of the going out and supporting charities by painting or digging gardens or all that kind of stuff, which, by the way, are great team development activities, um, and much more about using people's professional skills. We have a career-ready mentoring programme, for example. 
After the second survey, we focused on the fear deal area. Now, that was a point at time when there was severe pressure on the economy. There's a public, public sector pay freeze, so you can imagine, and very, very little that we could do. So we had to think about what are we going to do here. We introduced a recognition programme. I don't mean we introduced huge bonuses and things, because none of that's allowed. But much, much simpler things, so uh, retirement tees, for example. We've done over 60 retirement tees since we introduced this recognition programme. Spot on awards, five to 15 pounds. Tiny little awards that you can just turn around in sort of 24 hours. We do about 200 of them a year at the moment. Um, long service awards, I think we've done about 600 since we introduced this programme. And we've spent a lot of time really trying to explain to folk what was their total package worth to them? So we knew we couldn't give them more money. That wasn't available to us. But we, we spent the time explaining that to them. Did that go up the next time? No, it didn't. But you know what? It didn't go down. So that was a result for us. So it's not always about saying, well, the figures always have to go up. But it's about making sure that people understand what you're doing, why you're doing it, and also making sure that they know what they're getting from you as an employer. Personal growth, I said, was initially the second most highly correlated factor. It's actually moved, and it's now the most highly correlated factor for folks. And we've got quite a strong offering in this area, but what we really found was we had to change the conversation, shift that conversation away from um, constantly pushing and much more pulling, encouraging people to see it's not about going away and uh, you know uh, doing loads and loads of classroom-based activities or going away and having degrees paid for them nowadays because we can't necessarily afford to do that to the same degree um, but much more about on the job learning and actually that's been really good for people moving around the business as well well-being we've got some great benefits well we think we have we've got some great benefits we've got flexible working we've got fabulous leave policies and we have something called health shield a little a little and i will call it a little um, health policy but you know what, our folks didn't realise the value of all of that to them. They didn't know how to access half of it. We've got counselling, somebody talked about counselling earlier on. We've got a great counselling um, uh, offering as well. And what we did was we really worked with a group called our engagement group um, to, to really uh, develop the advocacy around that so that they were the people going out and talking to folk about it, not always coming from the organisation. And. Um, You'll be quite interested to know, I think, Roddy, as well, we are Healthy Working Lives, um, a, a Healthy Working Lives organisation. So we've been gold accredited since 2012. And that was really useful for us to help people to understand and access a lot of the, 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 the kind of, if you like, some of the more medical um, uh, pieces that they needed. So getting people help around things like uh, mental health and wellbeing. We have used the, the courses. Um, and lots, lots of other different things as well. We've done some amazing, silly, daft challenges, fitness challenges around our offices. It's amazing how competitive people can get and what a great feeling they get from some of that. After survey three, we introduced our engagement group. Um, and uh, that really was a, a chance for what we did with that was that um, we got, again, a, a, this a group of people from across the organisation, all different, different uh, levels, all different roles. And we take things to that group. So whether it be um, that we're going to introduce more uh, flexible working, we take things to that group in advance. We ask them their advice. We say to them, how do you think this is going to land with people? They get to help us shape how these things go into the business. And that's been really, really good. And we've also had a huge focus on people management and organisational clarity. Remember that um, slide earlier on, uh, the, the one about uh, the, the purpose, how people contribute. That's the organisational clarity piece. And we have a lot more to do, about, to do with that one, I believe, anyway. Um, I'm just going to go on to talk about uh, just a couple more things. Lots of people like to see what are the actual figures, okay? So the figures are not the most important thing to me, but um, lots of people like to see the figures. So I want to show you what it looks like for us in terms of scores in the doors. We've always had a really high response rate to our surveys, between 73 and 76%. And That's almost unheard of, particularly in the public sector. I think the, av the average for companies in our sector is around 63%. 
Um, in year one, when we did this, uh, we had a, a largely organisational response, if you like, to the survey. So, so that was when we pulled the group together and got them to work on the actions. Because, let's be honest, there was some scepticism in the business. Not everybody thought this was this great. A lot of people thought this was, as Philip said, woolly, fluffy. <sighs> Here they go again. So we had a bit of work to do to, to really encourage people that that wasn't the case. In year two, still a bit of a struggle, but we were getting there and our CEO was really, really clear. This engagement, employee engagement, that's your job. That's what she told our leaders and our managers. That is your job. In year three, we were overwhelmed with requests from the business. To, for, for us to help them to look at the results, to dissect the results, to help them do their action plans. And every business unit in our business now has their own action plan. And I believe strongly that's because we've been able to demonstrate progress throughout. I think what made a difference to us is that our business has really taken this very seriously. We acted on the feedback and demonstrated we were listening to our staff. I don't believe our staff would keep Add, you keep completing these surveys if that wasn't the case. So in our last survey, there was a few little bits and pieces I was just going to share very quickly with you. Um, a few, few highlights. Fair deal, I already said, stayed the same. It's still furthest from the benchmark we want to be at. We want to be at a one-star be benchmark, best companies, one-star benchmark. We're not quite there yet. But we did see positive movement in a number of individual questions. Giving something, something back, always been a really strong factor for us, but it reduced a little. And as I said, I think that's because people are looking for something different now, and, and we're, we're um, flexing to support that. My team was our best responding one, went up by 6%. My team's a funny one. It asks you if your team's fun to work in. Us Scots don't want to think about things like that, do we? We certainly don't want to think about that on the West Coast. Um, so that's, that's quite a challenging one sometimes. And two age areas that I wanted to talk around was organisational clarity. Look at that one there. 93% of people think they can make a valuable contribution to the organisation. 93%. I was amazed at that. But I still think we've got a long way to go. Um, another one I love here is 81% proud to work for the organisation. So what we always said in, in this um, engagement journey was this was us about um, making Scottish enterprise a great place to work. We want to be the best we can be. And that's always been our focus. Um, my manager is the other one I want to pick up on here. We've talked about it already as being uh, hugely influential. Um, from this, you can see that uh, in the last survey, we went up by three percentage points. Doesn't sound like much, but actually they say anything. Three and above or three and below is always a significant shift. So actually, it was quite quite a shift, and we're very delighted about it. And some great scores in terms of some of the questions. So my manager cares about me as an individual. We've heard about that this morning. The managers needing to care. Eighty percent agreeing. I can tell my manager if work's going badly. Eighty-five percent agreeing. Those are stats I'm very very proud of. You know, I think if you were to ever um, under, don't ever underestimate the the uh, the power of the manager. So a couple, of a couple of things that I've heard. So bad managers are the number one reason for people leaving a job. The number one reason. That's quite scary, isn't it? And uh, I, looked at, I looked up a Gallup study and it, says it, it said that 50% of those sur surveyed left the job to get away from their manager. 50%. Somebody raised their eyebrows there. <laughs> um, it's terrifying, isn't it? So you have to make sure that if you're going to do engagement, you're going to invest in those managers. Absolutely vital, because that's the proof of we need it. People managers hugely inf influential in the engagement equation. With best companies, we have now moved forward, um, and we're, we're working to what, I, I guess, is their, uh, is their methodology or their framework for uh, managerial engagement so they call that mc cubed it's all on their website you, you know you, easy enough to have a look at it um motivates cares con considers and converses are the lenses they look through so last time around with our survey our staff all got their own individual our, our managers all got their own individual reports which told them how they were doing in the engagement arena and uh you know, that's been really helpful for them. We use that as a development tool. It's not used for anything else. It's not a tool to hit people over the head with. It's a development tool. We've done quite a lot 
um, in Scottish Enterprise for our managers. We've held two specific people management conferences, really trying to make the, the connection between the engaged workforce and the business outcomes we are seeking. We've provided the individual reports, as I've said. And we worked with Best Companies on a, a pioneering programme to develop and roll out a series of half-day workshops. So in the last 12 months, we've been running, running these workshops with our staff um, across the business, our, our managers across the business. And we will con continue to do that. As with Resonance, which I talked about earlier on, um, we use our own people to facilitate these sessions. So we're not bringing anyone else in to do this because engagement is about us for us. We're the people who know best in terms of our own business and we very much use our own people to, um, you know, to do all of these things. I hope that gives you a bit of a flavour um, for the, the why, the how and the results of employee engagement. Um, it's very much embedded in our business now, I would say, even although at the moment we're going through some significant changes. So again, as Roddy will be aware, the Enterprise and Scottish Government, the Enterprise and Skills Review is working its way through and that's impacting the way we work, what we'll be doing and the shape that we might be. And we're also changing our CEO. So all of these things, you know, have an impact on, on uh, you, you know, your journey on these kind of things. I think though what's really important is we can accept that your engagement levels go up and down. It's brave to accept it, but actually if you look at all these big companies out there, the EYs, etc., it happens to them. One year their engagement levels might be much better than another. So it's not a terrible thing if they go down. It just means you need to readjust your, your kind of your programme. I've got a few wee um, photographs here that I wanted to share with you today and hopefully leave you with a bit of a smile. Um, one of the things we have done, I said we wanted to, to have this great place to work, uh, this great place to work um, feeling within Scottish Enterprise, that's, we want it to be the best possible place. One thing we've done over the last few years is we hold a, a staff conference, normally every couple of years. These photographs are from our last staff conference conference rather. So every one of our staff, 1,300 of them, from Canada to Clydebank, from Brussels to Bells Hill and from Singapore to Selkirk attend that. Can you just imagine all these people converging on the Glasgow Royal Concert Hall with one thing in common? They're pursuing economic development for Scotland. The buzz is amazing. We have no external event management. From start to finish, this conference is designed by us delivered by us, and it's for us. We do have some key external speakers. In fact, the last time around, we had the First Minister and we had Sir Ian Wood. But every bit of logistics right down to the ice lollies because it was a warm day, the catering, the workshops, you name it, we do it ourselves. And it's truly phenomenal. We focus on strategy, we focus on the business, and we also look at giving something back. Last time around, and I think you can see it up there in the top left-hand corner, we had our food Monroe, so we invited everyone to bring an item of food that we wanted to donate to the food bank. We collected so much food, it was the weight of a small family car. Can you imagine what that was like, trying to get moved out of the concert hall at the end of two days? We didn't imagine for a minute that there was so much food. There was so much food they couldn't get it into the local food bank. But it was amazing, and that food came from all over the world. But this is all part of being Scottish Enterprise. It's a great place to work and we're proud to be there. So what was that? 81% of our people said they're proud to work for Scottish Enterprise. We really, really want to continue with that. So before the event, what we said to folk was, let's have a bit of a laugh. Tell us what it's like working for Scottish Enterprise. Use some daft props. Go anywhere you like in relation to your work. Involve as many of your team as possible. Have a bit of fun with it. And at the end of the day, in the conference, this is what they walked out to. If we get to... Oh, I'm going to sign. It's not working. I'm sorry. It's not working. <laughs> um, you're seeing, I mean, you can see the video there, which is, which is fine, but unfortunately you're not getting the music. But the music was fantastic, and we had such a good laugh with it. They walked out to this video at the end of the day, all 1,200 people. Um, and, and I'll kind of leave it sitting there at the moment, but I said it already, it might sound trite, but your people are your greatest asset. So really make sure you invest your time in engaging them to deliver your business. Thank you very much.